chapter 20, pages 132 to 134. The townspeople follow the sermon's preaching until the king comes in, pretending to be a pirate who wants to spread Christianity as a ploy for the townspeople to give him money for his cause. The first show we come to, the preacher was lining out a hymn. He lined out two lines and everybody sung it, and it was kind of a grand hear it. There were so many of them, and they did it in such a rousing way. Then he lined out two more for them to sing, and so on. The people woke up more and more, and sung louder and louder, and towards the end, some began to groan, and some began to shout. Then the preacher began to preach, and began in earnest too, and went weaving first to one side of the platform and then the other, and then now leaning down over the front of it, with his arms and his body going all the time, and shouting his word out with all his might, and every now and then he would hold open his Bible and spread it open, and kind of pass it around in this way and that, shouting, It's the brazen serpent in the wilderness. Look upon it and live. And people would shout out, Glory, Glory amen. amen. And so he went on, and the people groaning and crying, saying, Amen. Oh, come to the mourner's bench. Come with black with sin. Amen. amen. Come sick and sore. Amen. amen. Come lame with halt and blind. Amen. amen. Come poor and needy, sunk in shame. Amen. amen. Come all that's worn and soiled and suffering. Come with a broken spirit. Come with a contrite heart. Come in your rags and sin and dirt. The waters that cleanse is free. The door of heaven stands open. Oh, enter in and be at rest. Amen. Amen. Glory, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. And so on. You couldn't make out what the preacher said. On account of the shouting and crying, folks got up everywhere in the crowds and worked their way just by the main strength to the mourners' bench with the tears running down the faces. And when all the mourners had got up there to the front of the bench in the crowd, they sung and shouted and flung themselves down on the straw, just crazy and wild. Well, the first I know, the king got it going, and you could hear him over everybody. And next he went on a charge up to the platform, and the preacher, he begged him to speak to the people, and he done it. He told them he was a pirate, been a pirate for 30 years, out in the Indian Ocean, and his crew was thinned out considerable. Last spring, in a fight, and he was home now, to take out some fresh men, and thanks to goodness, he'd been robbed last night, and put a short off of a steamboat without a cent, and he was glad of it. It was the blessedest thing that ever happened to him because he was a changed man now and happy for the first time in his life and as poor as he was, he was going to start right off and work his way back to the Indian Ocean and put in his rest of his life trying to turn the pirates into the true path. For he could do it better than everybody else being acquainted with all the people and all the pirates crews in that ocean and that though it would take him a long time to get there without money, he would get there anyway. And every time he convinced the pirate, he would say to them, Don't you thank me? Don't you, don't you thank me? Don't you give me no credit? It all belongs to them people in Polkville camp meeting. Not your brothers and benefactors of the race, and that dear preacher there, the truest friend a pirate could ever have. And then he busted into tears, and so did everybody. Then someone sings out, Take up a collection for him. Take up a collection. Well, a half a dozen made a jump to do it. But someone sings out, let him pass the hat around. So the king went all throughout the crowd with his hat, swabbing his eyes and blessing the people, praising them and thanking them for being so good to the poor pirates away off there and every little while the prettiest kind of girls with the tears running down their cheeks would up and ask him would he let them kiss them for to remember him by. And he always done it. And so, and some of them he hugged and kissed as many as five or even six times. And he was invited to stay a week. And everybody wanted to live in their houses and said they think it was kind of an honor. But he said as this was as th the last day of the camp meeting, he couldn't do no good. And besides, he was in a sweat to get to the Indian Ocean, ride off and go to work on the pirates.